These are the newest wireless chargers that just came out supporting the new iPhone 17 fast wireless charging. This one is from Belkin, sold on the Apple website. And this is the Anchor one, which is sold on Amazon. I'll have links down below for both of these, but I'm gonna share in detail what these are like and show you how they work and what the actual differences are because they're kind of confusing on the websites. And I don't understand which one should I get, which one is actually the better one. So let's get into it. Now, the biggest difference is probably footprint size. Both of these support Qi 2.2, 25 watt wireless charging on iOS 26 with the iPhone 17 and 15 watts for the iPhone 16 and before. Qi 1 charging is five watts. So that's a massive jump up. And if you use a cable, you can get up to 40 watts on the iPhone 17. Both support fast wireless charging on the Apple Watches. So you really only need five watts, but on the Series 10, 11, the Apple Watch Ultra 3, you can get fast wireless charging. And then they both have wireless pads on the bottom wing of the AirPods or any other wireless device that doesn't support MagSafe. Obviously with MagSafe, you're able to easily connect the phones. One issue I've always had with wireless charging is that it gets too hot. So I don't wireless charge my devices because it gets too hot and I can't use them. But with both of these, you can see there's fans on the back. You can actually change the cooling modes right here. You can turn it on and off to spin the fan to keep your phone cool. And they kind of rate that. One of them says it'll keep your phone at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. The other one says 12 degrees cooler than it is. I'm already holding this iPhone 17 Pro Max and it already feels warm. And luckily, Google, Google Pixel phones now offer Pixel Snap, which is pretty much MagSafe. So this works here as well. It is very strong. It works on both devices. And here's the active cooling on the Anchor. You see the fan is actually much bigger on the Anchor one, which is interesting. If you put them side by side, the MagSafe area seems to be larger. They both have silicone on the magnet area to keep it soft, but then the fan on the Anchor is just bigger. There's more vents. So I wonder if that one's able to keep it cooler. The footprint obviously of the Belkin is much smaller. As someone who lives in New York City, I don't have a lot of space. Every millimeter counts. And knowing that the Belkin one is much smaller, I do appreciate that. But I do love the fan that's bigger on the anchor. So if you have a small desk, most likely the Belkin is gonna fit. This does have a movable top so you can change how it fits. And obviously with your phone up here, you're going to be able to have standby mode. So you can put your phone on and charge it and have the time calendar, whatever it is. The Apple Watch ones do not, the iPhone or smartphone MagSafes do move. Now they both plug in with USB-C on the back, but there is one major difference in terms of the wattage that comes in from the charging bricks given to these devices. So you can see the Anchor will give you a 65 watt USB-C with folding prongs, at least in the US. The Belkin will give you a 45 watt, so it's about 20 watts less folding prongs as well. You can see the charging brick differences in terms of size, in terms of depth, and the other side. I don't think it really matters once you plug this in, especially as a charging station. You're not really traveling with this, but this is just something to note. When you are getting 20 more watts on the Anchor charging unit, the Anchor does also have a screen, so that might require more power. When it comes to the cables, they both provide USB-C braided cables. They look really nice, I and mean, they're both five feet long, so long enough. I would say the Anchor one looks and feels more like the Apple braided cables, whereas the Belkin one is the classic braid that you've seen on a lot of Belkin devices. We'll go ahead and plug these in. Obviously, the Anchor is black and dark. The Belkin is gray. Remember, links are down below. If you do plan to buy these, they help support the channel. We'll plug the Belkin in, and now we'll plug the Anchor in. Now these are them side by side. The Anchor does have the screen, so now it's gonna show the wattage it's being used. If I go ahead and place an Apple Watch Ultra 3 on there, you're going to see it's pulling about 1.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 watts of energy right there. Now, if I wanna go ahead and plug my iPhone on it, see if we can show you the wattage that's being pulled. Okay, now we're getting one watt on the iPhone, 1.7 watts. Let's go ahead and grab my brand new AirPods Pro 3 as well, place those in the middle. Boom, it's charging. Watch, phone, AirPods, cool little animation there. We're getting 8.6 watts on the phone, one watt on the AirPods, and 0.4 watts on the Apple Watch. Ultra cool, we can go ahead, and it, it shows me the temperature of the phone it's actually in ultra cool mode. You can change settings, there's a whole screen. There's actually an NFC chip in here where you can tap and connect it to your app. Tap to open settings. There's different modes. Entering boost mode, okay. Settings, screen timeout, screen saver, brightness, back. What other kind of modes are there? Boost mode, sleep mode, ice mode. Cooling performance will increase. So now I hear the fan, you can hear the fan a little bit. That's very subtle, but can you hear that fan right there? Now if you look at the iPhone, it says 40 minutes to 80%. So that's how fast it's going to charge. If we look at the screen here, it's pulling 20 watts, 10 watts. The wattage is definitely going up and down as it charges. So that's interesting to see the wattage being used for this charger. 
Let's take all these devices off and see if it increases on the iPhone charging. We should be able to get 25 watts down here. You're gonna see the iPhone temperature has increased. It is now cold and not ultra cold. We're gonna go to boost mode. So we should get the most amount of power, optimal performance. Now we're not seeing the full 20 watts of wireless charging here, 10 watts. Not sure why that is. Maybe Anchor can let us know, but it seems to be, you know, decently fast enough and not, not ideal. Let's try the Belkin one. Now, if I pull in the Belkin one, let's pull this bad boy in here. We're gonna place the iPhone right on top. It's gonna start charging up. Now it's saying 45 minutes to 80%. So this one actually is charging a bit slower with nothing else on it. Maybe because my phone has actually got, oh, 40 minutes to 80%. So now it's updated. The wattage has probably increased. So now wireless charging is matched on par of these two devices one to one. This MagSafe is a little bit slipperier than the Anchor one. Let's go ahead and put a watch on there as well as the AirPods right below. Boom. We've got a little icon right here to denote that it's charging on the bottom screen as well. We're gonna go ahead and put the iPhone on here. This footprint is extremely tiny. Like it's just taking up the size of my phone. So that's one thing I do appreciate about the Belkin. 40 minutes to 80%. So it's charging at the same speed as the Anchor one. And I think if we want to change the tilt, we have to take the phone off, change the tilt then put it on. But I'll say both these chargers are pretty good from a cooling perspective. Now from a price perspective, the Belkin is 129. So it's the cheaper one. Whereas the Anchor one is 229, but I've found it for 179 on Amazon. There are a lot more features like the NFC feature, the settings, the Bluetooth control, the app. So there's a lot more you can do with the Anchor charging base, but the footprint is bigger. I'll show you the NFC right here. You can see there's an NFC tag. So I can go ahead and scan with my phone right here. And I should be able to open up the Anchor app. I can connect, change settings, all that fun stuff through this app. Is that necessary? Am I gonna use it? Most likely not. But if I were to pick one, I'd probably pick the Belkin just because the footprint is smaller and it fits better on my extremely tiny desk here in New York City. But the Anchor one is like more of a powerhouse. I have the space. I want more control. I want more things to do with it. But in terms of charging speeds, it seems like both of them are on par with each other. Even though on the Amazon website, the Anchor one says Qi 2, 25 watt. And then the Belkin one says Qi 2.2, 25 watt. Qi 2.2 is the same thing as Qi 2, 25 watt. They both support 25 watt wireless charging. They have fans, which is really good. So if you want more in-depth testing with the fan, the heat, the charging over time, multiple different phones, let me know in the comments below. We can make that happen. This is Shervin Shares Reviews. Subscribe to our notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Shervin Shares. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.